All right guys, what's up? So in today's video, I'm gonna be going over the basics on how to maintain a motorcycle. So if you guys are new to motorcycles and you kinda of wanna know what you got yourself into, this video is for you. So the first thing I recommend you do is get an owner's manual for your bike. This is gonna have every single thing you need to know about the bike in this book. You should be able to buy one online pretty much for any bike. So before each and every ride, what you're gonna to wanna to do is do an inspection of your tires. What you're looking for is cracks, nails, holes, anything like that. If it has any cracks in it, you're gonna to wanna to just replace the tires. And if you do have a hole in your tire, don't use Fix-A-Flat and don't plug the tire. The best option is gonna to be to get the tire patched. Now that you check the tires, what you're gonna to wanna to do is just check the tire pressure. You're gonna to wanna to check the tire pressure, I'd say at least once a week. If your tires are low on pressure and you're riding it, it could mess up the shape of the tires and cause them to wear faster, specifically in the middle. So make sure that the tire pressure is correct. It'll tell you somewhere on the bike what the tire pressure should be. It's gonna tell you two things. If you're riding solo, that's gonna require a certain tire pressure. And if you're riding a passenger, that's gonna require a certain tire pressure. Now for this bike, it doesn't matter if you have a passenger or you're riding solo, it's the same tire pressure. It might not be like that for every bike. So make sure that you're checking what the tire pressure should be. So when to replace the tires, guys. So you're gonna to wanna to check the middle of the tire because that's gonna wear the quickest because most of us are just riding these bikes as commuter bikes and just for fun or whatever on the street. If you're going really fast in corners and stuff like that, you probably wanna check the sides of the tires as well. So what you're gonna need is a penny. Yes, a penny. Take the penny, flip it upside down. If you can see the full head of Abraham Lincoln, that means that it's probably time to start thinking about replacing your tires. On the tires, it'll tell you how old the tires are. It'll tell you the week and the year, just look on the side. Now, if you have tires that are like eight or 10 years old, just replace the tires. They say replace your tires, I think it's every four or five years. If they still have a little bit of tread and they're maybe like five years old, hey, I'd probably get another season out of them, but just make sure you check the tread and make sure they're not cracked or anything like that. You don't want one of your tires to blow out. That's pretty, you know, that's pretty dangerous on a motorcycle. Make sure you guys are doing regular scheduled oil changes on your bike. I recommend that you just replace the oil before every single season. Even if the book says, hey, replace it every 3,000 miles, but you only rode it 1,500 miles for the year, just replace it every single year. And make sure you guys replace the oil filter as well. You don't wanna put new oil in the engine and then have old oil in the filter. That doesn't make a lot of sense. So just replace the oil filter every single time you do the oil. And when you guys pull the oil filter off, make sure that the gasket comes off with the oil filter. That way you don't double gasket it when you put the new one on and then now you have an oil leak. So I would recommend you use the oil that the manual says to use, but if your bike's really old, there's better oil today than there was 15 years ago. So you might wanna do some research and figure out what the best oil is for you to use in your bike. But if you guys use different oil, just make sure that the weight is correct. That's pretty important have to check the oil level. This bike has a sight glass, some bikes have a dipstick. The way you wanna check the oil is make sure you're on level ground, make sure it is off the kickstand. I recommend that you get a buddy and have him hold it up and get it as level as you can. Or if you have two stands and you're on level ground, you can check it like that as well. Make sure you do not check the oil level with the bike on. When the motorcycle's on, the oil gets sucked up into the top of the engine and you're gonna get a reading that you have no oil in there and you're gonna keep filling it up and you're gonna put way too much oil in it. If it's been running, let it sit for like five or 10 minutes. That way the oil settles to the bottom end of the motor. You measure the oil when it's on the bottom end of the motor, not the top. For an oil sight glass, there's gonna be two lines, a minimum oil level and a maximum oil level. Just make sure you're somewhere in that window, not below and not above. And for a dipstick, what you're gonna wanna do is take the dipstick out, wipe it clean, put it back in and then take it out and then check your reading. There's gonna be two lines, one's the maximum and then one's the minimum. Just make sure you're somewhere in between and you're good to go. Take a peek at the oil level like every other ride, make sure you're not burning oil or leaking oil or anything like that. If you have too much oil on the bike, your oil pressure is gonna to be too high and you could possibly blow a gasket and that's bad. If you don't have enough oil, your engine's not gonna be getting enough protection. The oil keeps everything lubricated and you don't want metal parts touching. If you don't have enough oil, you could cause serious engine damage. Where you're gonna find the air filter on a bike like this is gonna be under the tank. Sometimes if you're riding an off-road bike, it'll be under the seat. You're gonna to wanna to inspect the air filter. If you see any slits, tears, cracks, replace it. If you guys ever looked at the front of your bike, you see all those bugs and all that debris. If your air filter's damaged, it could suck in some of those bugs and that debris and get inside of the engine and cause engine damage. Also, if the air filter has a hole in it and you're pulling in additional air, that's gonna make the engine run leaner. And that's bad because the engine's gonna be running hotter. The stock filters on these things are made out of like paper material. You can't reuse them. If you buy 
design aftermarket filter and their fabric, you can reuse them, which I like. You can wash them and reuse them. And I would recommend that you clean the air filter at least once a year. So having a clean air filter is pretty important. If your air filter is dirty, you're going to be losing horsepower. And also too, you're going to be getting worse fuel efficiency. I'd recommend that you guys inspect the air filter at least two to three times a year. So this is a chain driven motorcycle, so it's gonna be pretty important to the bike's performance. You're gonna to wanna to do a visual inspection on your chain pretty frequently. On this bike, you're not gonna be able to see the front sprocket, but you can see the rear sprocket. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is check the teeth on the sprocket. If you see a few that are shorter than the others or they're bent, any that are missing, what I would do is just replace it all. Because if you replace the rear and you don't replace the front, then you're probably gonna to have to replace the front in a few months anyway. So you might as well just replace it all, including the chain. So adjusting your chain. So if your chain's too tight, that's bad. And if your chain's too loose, that's also bad. So if the chain's too tight, you're at risk of snapping the chain and having the chain come up and smack the engine. And there's gonna be oil everywhere and it's gonna be a pretty bad day. If the chain's too loose, you're gonna wear the sprockets out faster. To check the tension of the chain, you're just gonna wanna go to this part of the chain and lift it up with your finger and take a measuring tape. It should be about an inch. So if you want an exact measurement, just check online or look in that manual I told you to buy. Now how you adjust the chain on most bikes, there's some Something called chain blocks. If you see the little ticks on there, if you're at the fourth little tick on one side, you need to make sure you're on the same thing on the other side. That way the back wheel isn't wobbling while you're riding. If you see that little gap in the swing arm, that room right there is for you to adjust the chain. So you can move the rear wheel back on the swing arm to tighten it. And if you wanted to loosen it up a little bit, you just move it forward. You want to clean your chain every 800 to 1,000 miles. If you're taking your bike off-road, then you're going to want to clean it more frequently. So this is an O-ring chain, so there's rubber in the chain. So you want to make sure that you get a cleaner that's safe on rubber. There's going to be a ton of different things that you read online. I use kerosene on my chains. That seems to work really, really well. You don't have to buy a super expensive cleaner. This right here is going to work well, and you're going to get a lot of it for cheap. I've had this for over a year, and I still have like half of it left. If you type it in on Google, it'll tell you right there. It's a great cleaner to use on motorcycle chains. I use it all the time. I recommend that you buy a chain cleaning tool. Links will be in the description for that if you guys want that. So the chain cleaning tool is pretty convenient, but if you don't have that, just use an old toothbrush. That'll work as well. Just take a little bit more time. Now that the chain's clean, you're going to need to lube it. As I mentioned before, this is an O-ring chain. So you're going to want to find something that's safe on rubber. And right on this bottle, it says O-ring safe. Make sure that you're getting those O-rings nice and lubricated. When rubber dries out, it wears out faster. The chain is pretty important to the bike's performance. Taking care of your chain is going to extend the life of the chain and it's going to save you money in the long run. There's going to be two brake reservoirs on your bike. The front brake reservoir is going to be near the front of the bike. The rear brake reservoir is going to be near the rear of the bike. If the brake fluid is starting to get dark brown in color, you're going to want to replace it. Anytime you replace your brake fluid, be careful. Anything that brake fluid touches, it destroys. You're going to want to be really careful and not get the brake fluid on your paint. Also to take a peek at the brake pads. Make sure you don't get the brake pads down to the metal because that is going to ruin a lot of things. When you hit the brakes, the pistons and the calibers push the brake pads together as you use more of your brake pads and they get smaller and smaller what happens is is the piston pushes out further and further you get it all the way down to the metal that could seize up your calibers and that's going to cost additional money if it gets metal to metal you're going to ruin the rotors now you need new calipers and rotors because you didn't replace the brake pads so make sure that you replace the brake pads don't let them get too too low you're also going to want to check the pressure of the brakes if you're pulling in the front brake and you're pulling it all the way almost to the throttle then hey you need to bleed the brake same thing with the rear brake you don't want to be pushing it down too too far make sure you have good pressure in both brakes what you can check for too with the brakes is if you're braking and you're getting all this pulsating that means that your rotors are probably warped you want to replace them that way your brake pads wear evenly Now I recommend that you guys get a battery tender. Reason for that is, it's because it's gonna maintain a full charge on your battery. You guys aren't riding your bike for the winter and you come back to start it up in the springtime, it won't start. What you're gonna wanna do is, is buy a battery tender and links for that will be in the description. Nice thing about a battery tender compared to just a regular battery charger is the battery tender won't overcharge the battery and when the battery is fully charged, it'll maintain that full charge. Yes, you can start up your bike, but that's not gonna maintain a full charge. You're gonna want a battery tender to maintain that full charge and that will extend the life of your your battery that's going to save you money and that way you don't have to replace your battery every year throttle cable maintenance 
Some throttle cables you can lubricate, others you can't. If your throttle cable's not snapping back, that's pretty dangerous. You're gonna wanna make sure it's snapping back fast. So if it's not, make sure the throttle cable isn't pinched because that's pretty dangerous. I actually had one of my dirt bikes, the throttle cable was getting stuck open because the cable was pinched. So just make sure the cable is ran correctly and it's not pinched. Make sure it's lubricated as well. Some bikes, you don't have to do that, but just make sure the throttle cable Make sure your throttle cable snapping back like it should and make sure you have a little bit of play in the cable as well. You don't want it too tight. So make sure you guys inspect the lights. That's pretty self-explanatory. Just make sure all the lights work. You know, you don't want to be using your brakes and then your brake light's not coming on. The guy behind you is going to be pretty confused. And the last thing we want to do is confuse other drivers when we're on a motorcycle. So make sure your signals work and all that. I bought this motorcycle used and I, I was excited. I checked every single thing except for the lights. I brought it home and figured out, hey, one of the turn signals was burnt out. And while you're checking the lights, make sure your horn's working as well. That way you can tell the person on their phone in front of you that the light's green. So if you guys don't have a motorcycle and you want one, I highly suggest that you watch this video over here. If you guys want to save a couple bucks and you're thinking about buying it used, I highly suggest that you watch this video over here. And I want to say thank you guys for watching as well. And if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you guys smash the like button. If you guys have any questions for me, leave it in the comment section. And if you feel like I left something out, go ahead and leave it in the comment section as well. That way we can help other people out. And if you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing. That'd be pretty cool. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.